lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. Now it's time for our fateful financial moments with Sister Sharon Richard. This is Sharon Richard with your fateful financing moments. The NIV version of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7 tells us, 
But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. How would you respond to someone who insists they are spiritually mature because they tithe despite the fact that they don't study the word, they rarely pray, and aren't in fellowship. We recognize that the absence of any one of these limits our spiritual strength. Do we equally see, though, that the absence of sacrificial giving also limits our spiritual strength? In order to truly yield to God's ownership of our possessions, we must evaluate carefully what may be the most telling evidence of our stewardship, the part we give. Just as we decide on what we spend on an appliance or how much we will put in a savings or retirement account, we must also make the decision on how much we will give to others. Many see the responsibility of giving as a burden. Giving is actually a relational decision. In the process of making giving decisions, really establish our agreement with God about stewardship. As we continually decide to give, we constantly affirm how much we value our relationship to God. And as God's stewards, giving decisions are simply a matter of thinking through how he wants us to allocate his money. An amazing benefit of giving as stewards is that it releases us from the real burden of our own financial needs. As we learn to trust God through giving, we can live confidently on what is left because we know that God is taking care of it. Giving is a freeing experience as it connects us more closely to God relationally. Giving becomes worship. Giving becomes a way of saying thanks to God for his grace and promised provision. Giving becomes a deep part of our personal connection to God. I must admit that there have been times when, on the one hand, I felt in my spirit that I should give to help someone, and yet I feared the impact it would have on my own financial needs. Of course, we cannot, nor does God expect us to give beyond our means, but we must seek God's guidance in decisions of giving just as we seek his guidance in all other aspects of our lives. If it is his will, we can trust that he will provide for us and the concerns we have he has already taken care of. Remember that we can never, let me say that again, remember that we can never outgive God. But when we give, we honor God by sharing the many gifts that he has blessed us with by blessing others. This is Sharon Richard with your Faithful Financing Moment. Up next, Nina Taylor with Your Gospel News followed by the Pastor's Corner with Elder Ernest D. Richard, Jr., Apostle Irvin Whitlow, and company. Hello, everyone. I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your Gospel News. Born on January 12, 1988, in Phoenix, Arizona, Courtney Jamal Pollard, who performs under the stage name of Molly Music. He's an American recording artist, singer, songwriter, and producer. In 2011, he was the first inspirational artist to be part of BET's acclaimed Music Matters series. Based out of Savannah, Georgia, this singer, songwriter, and musician, Courtney Malley Music Pollard, builds richly detailed, emotionally present neo-soul hip-hop confections in the vein of Lauryn Hill, D'Angelo, and Bilal on a foundation of conventional gospel music. A multi-instrumentalist since the age of five, Pollard, who counts Sam Cooke and Otis Redding among his influences, issued the inspirational Coming, his debut album in 2008. The well-received, bold, narrative-driven Second Coming arrived the following year, resulting in a major label deal with RCA, who issued the singles Ready Aim and Beautiful in 2013. His third long player, entitled Mally Is, dropped in 2014. 
In 2016, Mally Music issued the single Digital in advance of the release of his fourth album, The Contradiction of Mally, which came out in 2017. Professionally known as Toby Mac, Toby McKeon grew up in northern Virginia suburbs in the shadow of Washington, D.C., where he fell in love with rap music. While attending Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia during the mid-80s, he met Michael Tate and Kevin Max, known as Kevin Max. And the three friends formed a Grammy-winning, platinum-selling Christian pop group, DC Talk, which mixed elements of CCM, grunge, and rap. When DC Talk ended in 1999, McKeon began a solo career that was stylistically diverse and immensely successful as well. Momentum, the first Toby Mac solo album, released in 2001. Then he issued Mix Momentum in 2003. Welcome to Diverse City in 2004. That landed Toby Mac a Dove Award for Rap Hip Hop Album of the Year. Another album, Renovating Diverse City, came in 2005, released in 2007. This track made it all the way to Billboard's Top 200 at number 10. Four of its singles, including Kirk Franklin and Medisa's collaboration, Lose My Soul, reached Billboard's Top Christian Songs charts. It was followed in 2008 by the two-disc Alive and Transported. Gospel artist Bridget Hurt, formerly known as Bridget Campbell, known internationally for her electrifying soulful voice, she instantly captivates the hearts of her audience through her charisma and spiritual integrity. Bridget is the youngest of four siblings, the daughter of a pastor and evangelist. Her musical career began in church at the age of three. At 15, she was the leader of the Grammy Award-winning gospel choir, Ricky Dillard and the New Generation Chorale. Bridget has toured with stellar award winner Marvin Sapp and also Dawkins and Dawkins. For two years, Bridget toured as a member of Fred Hammond's Radicals for Christ. Her single, Yeah, Yeah, featured on Fred Hammond's compilation, In Case You Missed It, Bridget performed in three theatrical productions. Most recently, she starred as Coco in the play, Been There, Done That. In 2002, Bridget toured Europe singing backup for Jesse Dixon. In 2003, Bridget released her first solo album entitled, Bridget. Then came the album, Been Good, which was released in 2004 when she toured Italy. A live recording in 2009 and 10. Then in 2013, Bridget joined the Lighthouse Church of All Nations and became part of the music department. She's assistant music director and a worship leader. Here's your Blazing Hot Praise Top 10 Gospel Songs. Number 10, Ernest Pugh, God Wants to Heal You. 9, Anthony Brown with This Week. 8, Charles Jenkins, Keep the Faith. 7, Fred Hammond, All Right. 6, Travis Green, Won't Let Go. 5, Pastor Mike Jr., Big. 4, Clark Sisters, Victory. 3, Dietrich Haddon, Open Door Season. 2, Kirk Franklin, Just For Me. And once again, for four weeks, Jermaine Dolly and Miranda Curtis with Pull Us Through. Well, that's your Blazing Hot Praise, Top 10 Songs, and your Gospel News. I'm Nina Taylor. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your Gospel News reporter, and you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. And of course, you can hear my dear friend, Nina Taylor, each and every Thursday night at 10 p.m. right here on The Pastor's Corner. We want to take this time to welcome each and every one of you for joining us here on this uh, fast-growing broadcast here. God has been so wonderful, so merciful, and so kind to each and every one of us. We want to thank God for uh, those of you who are listening to this podcast by way of Spotify, by way of iHeart, by way of the Google app, uh, whether you're on YouTube, the TuneIn app, or wherever you may be listening to. We bless God that you took the time to tune into this particular show. To those of you who are listening to us by way of WJGRG, uh, my good friend Jerry Green up there in the New Haven area, we bless God for each and every one of you, and we pray that you're doing well up there. And to my friends who are listening by Spricker Radio, our good friend Dr. Jerry Royce himself, 
my man. Anyway, we're going to get going here because there is a lot to talk about. So much has happened since we last got together. But let's get the panel in here and let's go do roll call and find out who is with us. Leading off always, my brother from another mother, 26-plus years under the belt. We've been through the fire. We've been through the flood. We've been through hell and high water together. We were out on the battlefield. We had each other's back. I'm talking about none other than Vice Apostle Irvin Whitlow. How are you, my brother? We give God praise for the opportunity to join once again. I'm so excited, man. It seems like it's been a lifetime since we've been here with the Pastor's Corner. And so there's much to talk about, so let's get to it. Welcome, all of y'all that hey. listen. He is here. Hey, man. And, of course, my other brother from another mother, and we've got a little about approximately 40 years under the belt, kind of grew up together, even though at one point different denominations, yet the fellowship remains strong from the time we were teenagers. And I want to bless God for this young man coming in. I thank him for just, I thank God for him and his wisdom. He's an old soul, but he ain't that old. Come on and welcome Chief Apostle Vincent L. Smith. <laughs> Chief Apostle, are you with us? You, you, me, radio, radio. Uh huh. You. We're looking for God to do great things on the air tonight. Amen. That he may minister to us clearly out of his word. We are waiting to receive. Table is hey. praying. And the feet of the Lord is going on. Amen. We have some wonderful women of the word that are with us today. I am going to do this in this order because when we finish the order, uh, I am going to look for them to come back to me because tonight the women are going to lead us off uh, with this a variety of things. First, a very dear friend of mine. She's my baby sister, newly adopted. And the beautiful thing is her birthday is the same as mine, so you know we get along just fine. I'm talking about the legendary, the incomparable, the vivacious, and spiritually beautiful. I'm going to call her Evangelist Henderson. How are you, dear heart? I know she's Hi, tonight. Some... Julie, it is a privilege yeah. to be on the line with each one on tonight. And I'm looking forward to the discussion of my military and Amen. This next one is coming up out of uh, the New Jersey area. She is a gospel terror in her own right. She knows what it means to go into the hedges and into the highways and compel them to come. She ain't afraid of the devil, but the devil best be afraid of her. I'm talking about none other than Sister Glenda G. Johnson. My sister, how are you? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Everything is well. Is it well with your soul tonight? All is well. All is well. All is well. well. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need, if I had a drum roll, I would go with the drum roll because this first, the next person I'm about to announce is technically the glue that holds this entire show together. She is the producer of the Pastor's Corner for the last six to seven years, the last seven years. This is our baby sister, my friend, one who knows what it means to be a prayer warrior. She's a demon-stopping, devil-chasing, will not Take no for an answer individual. Y'all come on and put give it put it up and give it up for none other than Sister Kimmy Kim. Hello. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has whoop, made. Whoop, 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 and guess who else who we have on? We have on my sister Nina Taylor. Whoa, bless the Lord. Oh my God. Hey. 
The sisters is out tonight. Brothers, where you at? Brothers, where you at? Oh, 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 it. oh it. <laughs> SOS, <laughs> SOS. <laughs> We're so happy. <laughs> Come on, sister, Mr. Taylor, and greet the audience. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Oh, uh, just, God uh, bless you. Oh, oh just so God. happy to be with you guys. I'm always here. I'm always here. Just so I'm silent. I'm a silent partner. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, we're going to try oh, to keep the hopefully tonight's discussion will break the silence for you. We do have something to talk about, but we have some other stuff to talk about. So listen, we've got mm-hmm. to get started. Welcome you, those of you who are watching by Facebook Live. We thank God for you coming in and being with us. We like to have fun here, but at the same time, there are some times when we have to be serious about what we talk about. So before we go anywhere, Evangelist Henderson, I'm going to need you to break open your best prayer, your bestest prayer, and let the Lord know that we're knocking on the door. And Sister Kimmy Kim, I'm going to need you to come with scripture. And then our chief apostle, our apostle uh, Vincent Smith, I'm going to need you to give our opening dissertation. But before we go there, I want to take a minute to say, uh, to uh, offer condolences to the Floyd family. Uh, And I pray that I said his name right. Uh, As many of you know, just yesterday, uh, not that long ago, around 8 o'clock at night, a young man out in Minneapolis, Minnesota, was viciously murdered in the presence of a body of people by a police officer, and there was no need for it. The young man was handcuffed and laying face down in the floor. This officer took it upon himself to put his knee right in the neck and the, and the section of the neck, and it's a move that if you close off the trachea, you can cause them to suffocate. They'll pass out, go unconscious, suffocate, and eventually die. So let's take a minute to – let's talk about this before we get into our topic. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm not confused tonight. I want to put this on the table because once we get our topic of discussion started, I want to shift gears. Uh, let's start with you, Chief Apostle Smith. And let's talk just for a few minutes about this heinous crime that was committed yesterday. Okay. We're going to talk about it now. Uh, let's do prayer first. Kimmy Kim, hold the scripture for a minute. Let's do prayer first. Come on, Evangelist Anderson. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for gathering on this line tonight. Father, we give you praise because you're God and God all by yourself. Father, we thank you because you reign and you super reign. And we want you to reign. Hallelujah on this service on tonight. Father, we ask that you have your way in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up the boy's family, Father God. We lift up that bereaved family on tonight, Father God. We ask, oh God, that you will comfort them, oh God. We ask that your peace, oh God, that presence our understanding will touch our hearts in their minds, oh God. Lord, the people there in Minneapolis, oh God. Oh God, and we ask that you would intervene, oh God, in behalf of that city, Father God. Oh, the disturbance and all that's going on, Father God. But Lord, you truly are a God of justice and righteousness, oh God. And so, Lord, we put this matter in your hand, and we're believing, oh God, for resolution, oh God. We believe in you, God, for you to fix it, Lord, like only you can in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we ask you to remember everyone on the line tonight that you were blessed like only you can in the name of Jesus. Bless every listener, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let something be said tonight that will elevate somebody's mindset, that will take somebody a little further on their journey with you, Father God. And Lord, bless every speaker on the line tonight, that the words of wisdom will come out, that the discussion will be fruitful and edified. And Lord, we thank you for it now in the mighty name of Jesus for what, what our ears are about to hear. Give us, give us, oh God, what to say in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we bless your name. And we give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Before, uh, let, let, let's talk a little bit about this, uh, this uh, murder. And then we'll get into the topic for the night. Pop Smith for just a minute or two. Uh, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, share it with us. Tonight, it, it is, um, it saddens my heart that in America, 
where we are already in the midst of one of the worst pandemic that has ever hit the USA, that we still have police officers who choose to police in their own way, never, never, never have I gone to a police training where they have taught police officers to put their neck, to put their knee in somebody's neck and hold them down. I've never seen it. It's not in the training book. And this officer took it upon himself. As our host has already said, the young man was already cuffed. So what could he do? Already laying on the ground. So what could he do? Already being obedient to law officers. It's not like he was laying on the ground, kicking and screaming and trying to cause a disturbance. But I want you to know, people of God, amen, we are still dealing after all these years. We are still dealing with racism. We are still dealing with hatred. We are still dealing with... Amen, with just outright ignorance when it comes to the black and white issue, amen, Hispanic issue, anybody they think they can be superior to, it is an issue. My, yeah. my word tonight is I'm praying that this issue will be resolved not only by them being fired, but I'm praying that this will cause a new, a, a renewed spirit in every police officer across the country, new training, and if need be, a whole new office of police officers that really want to police and not go out and be dirty Harry. And take law into their own hands. Thank you for this space. Uh, Amen. Amen. Vice Apostle Whitlow. Um, I, I think that Apostle Vincent Smith has spoken well. I call this the quiet pandemic, the quiet epidemic. It is still a widespread racism still exists, and it is the thing that is ignored. But I just firmly believe that what filters through the body is what comes from the head. Unfortunately, it exists in the very uh, Oval Office. And because of that, there are those who are in places of authority who believe that they can do the very same. And here's what, here's, here's what real prejudice is. What, re- what, it, what it is is someone's neurotic attempt to be God. And say you belong You don't belong I I do not condone what has happened I'm very disappointed That this officer took it upon himself To do this But I'm even more upset When it's in our own community Because we want to get mad At the officer But we won't get mad with one another And so I feel that We cannot be contradictory If we don't like Racism or if we don't like this type of behavior when it comes to murder, then we ne- we don't need to just look at that officer alone. But we need to look at uh, we need to look at Bonquisha, and we need to look at Coco in them and Buddha in them around the corner who are doing the very same thing. Just not mm-hmm. or they're just not being recognized. So that's my issue. That's my problem. And my prayer is that what God will do is allow revival to come that will cause people to reach out to him and be saved for real till we are a people who are not divided, who do not see skin color. We see one race, and it's called the human race. Those are my words. Thank you for that space. Amen. Evangelist Henderson. Evangelist Henderson. 
Did we lose her? Yes. I am here now. All right. I mean, consensus, what what has already been said, is, and I know that every situation that Jesus is the answer for, every problem that ever exists, whether it be racism, whether it be murder, whether it be whatever crime, whatever hideous situation that it occurs, that he truly is the answer. And I know that even in this, Jesus really is the answer. And it's my desire, as Apostle Wentwell said, that, that people will just come to realize that we are all one. You know, we are all one. God doesn't see color. You know, he sees us as a human race, and we, he made us in his image. And it's my prayer that we will, we will all see that he has a purpose for each one of us and that we will stop fighting one another, come together, and to fulfill our own destiny. Amen. All right, Sister Glenda. Okay, praise God. Um, I think it, it, it racism um, not only uh, against another race, but racism in our own community, you know, our own people killing each other. I believe mm-hmm. it's a spirit. I believe it's a spirit that we have to come together and fast and pray. Mm-hmm. Um we, you know, to come together as uh, the body of Christ and pray, fast and pray, because this is a spirit that has been plaguing America for a long time. You know, uh, yes, we do get upset when it's the black and white, but we also have to get upset when it's our own, killing mm-hmm. each uh-huh. other's neighborhood, killing of each okay. other, you know. So, um so until we we really come and tackle this and start having first and foremost having love for our own for each other, stop the killing in our own neighborhood, number one. Because when people see that we don't care about each other, then they don't care about us either. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yes, Sister right. Nina Taylor. Yes, sir. Well, I'm still just devastated. I've watched the video over and over, and I still can't believe that these things are still going on. But it goes back even farther than Minnesota. It goes all the way back to, the, you know, to slavery, if you really think about it. It goes back to slavery and how they chased us down and beat us. And it's still going on today. And I was thinking about uh, in the 60s, I heard on another show, uh, people were talking about they were they were putting people in chokeholds. They were putting the blacks in chokeholds. You know, it's, it's just it's training. Don't don't be fooled. I mean, they're being trained to do things that they're doing. They're being trained. They're being told yeah. that we're dangerous. That we're you know that always. I mean, I've seen uh, people. I used to date a cop, and they they put it in the record. Go chase this person. They might be after them for something as small as petty theft. And it always says, black, armed, and dangerous. Like, he's not dangerous. <laughs> you know, how, just because someone still doesn't make him dangerous. So this is training. This is how they were trained. This is why they do it, because that's what they were trained. How they look at us is how they're being trained. So I, I don't want anybody to be fooled to think that this guy just did this on his own. This is what he's being trained to do. And there needs to be some legislation or something in place uh, so that the training is obviously different because this is what they're being put in their mind that we're so dangerous that, you know, you have to be ready, ready to kill because they're going to kill you. They kill each other every day. So just be, be aware of that. So it, it, it's scary. And, and it's so sad that this is still going on today. Amen. All right. I'm going to bring in Sister Kimmy Kim. And after her, I'll give my whatever I'm going to share, and then from there, Sister Kimmy Kim, you get ready for scripture. So, Sister Kim, if you would just come on, uh, share your thought process with us. Sure. I'm still angry, and uh, like I, I, I do respect everything that was said, but we do have to keep in mind that uh, even when we were all together, um, they burned out Urban Avenue in Atlanta, Oklahoma City. So, really, it's always been this way. Even when we when we do come together, it's always something that happens from the opposite of us, like white people. So they don't want us to be um, in unity. So when we do become in unity or have a leader, that leader get, gets killed. So 
the only answer is it's God. And I understand black and black crime, but you have to remember it's white it's white on crime too. It's Hispanic on Hispanic crime. It's just that it's not um, acknowledged like ours is. So I don't. I understand that we do kill each other, but you have to remember that other races are killing each other. They just don't get the media attention. What is needed is love. So I'm still angry because it shows to me that this man has no remorse, no heart, no love. He just. And you know what? It was about a twenty dollar forgery. He he didn't mm-hmm. even know it was um, a twenty dollar forgery. I mean, that could have been me. I, I mean, I don't know whether or not this particular $20 would be real okay, but he got killed over $20. That's why. So I'm still angry. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right, get the scripture ready, Sister Kimmy Kim. I'm going to just simply say this because all that really needed to be said uh, for this segment has been said. I will say this. Going forward, knowing what has happened, knowing how it happened, everybody by now, I won't say everybody, but a vast majority has seen the video and saw the heartlessness of this particular police officer and the other three. There were actually two in the video that you saw, one by the name of Officer Cho, who stood on guard while this other 19-year vet suffocated this young man. And the other two were at the back of the police car and standing there talking as if nothing was going on. Here's my take on it. I want to see the body of Christ, the church, leaders of the church. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about, I'm talking to the local leaders. I am talking to those leaders up there in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Reach out for once. Come on, church. Stand up. We talk about great men like Martin Mm -hmm. Luther King, and we talk about Mm -hmm. other leaders like Sophie Carmichael and different ones, Malcolm X. You have to understand the church had a voice back in the late 50s and the 60s. Mm -hmm. It's time for that voice to be raised again. It's time for us to Mm -hmm. stand up and have some backbone. If you say, for God I live, for God I die, the Bible says, Mm -hmm. open your mouth for the cause of the dumb and those who are without voice. I'm challenging the church at large to stand up and be counted. Those people in Minneapolis need healing. They need guidance. They need direction. I've seen a video already where the police came back through the neighborhood while the people protested. I saw people throwing things at the police car and spitting on the police car. Are you crazy? You're trying to incite a riot. We are borderline civil war in this country because of this pandemic called racism. And now it's time for the church to come in and to quell the storm of violence and lead a peaceful protest. Something can get done. The Bible simply says if any two touch and agree is touching any one thing, Amen. God said he would do it. So until we come together, it is on us. The body of mm-hmm. Christ, the church at large, and all of you leaders, don't hide behind you. Well, you can't hide behind your million-dollar death now because the truth of the matter is the church is probably still closed. But it doesn't stop you from getting involved. And I don't want to hear it's not my problem. Yes, it is your problem. Mm-hmm. I sound a little mm-hmm. agitated. I am. But let me calm down because we still have – uh, another portion, and I want to say that this segment right here was just part of what we're going to talk about. Sister Kimmy Kim, I'm going to call on you to read our scripture because we're going to go back to something and pick up where we left off last week. We had a discussion going, and I'm going to ask you read the scripture. Uh, Chief Apostle Smith, I'm going to ask that you would uh, please give us our dissertation. We got a discussion going talking about when opportunity not. Now, I'm going to say this before you read, Sister Kimmy Kim. Here is an opportunity, body of Christ, and all of you leaders that are watching, and I know a lot of you, you poke your heads into this program, and then you poke back out on Facebook Live, and I hope you stay long enough to hear what's about to be said. Here is an Mm. opportunity knocking. Let's see how you handle it. Come on, Sister Kimmy Kim. So we're coming from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, um, verses 1 through 6, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. 
give a portion to seven, and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth, and if the tree fall towards the south or towards the north, in the, in the place where a tree fell it, there it shall be. Observe it, the wind shall not sow, and he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest, not what is the weight of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who make it all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold and not thy hand. For no, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike. Blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his most high word. Oh, right. In your hands. Pastor Smith. <laughs> Is Apostle Smith with us? I don't know. I don't Did we know. lose Apostle Smith? Chief Apostle, are you yes, with us? He's here. He's here. Oh, Lord. Jesus. All right. Well, uh, Apostle Whitlow, and should he come in, he can pick up because we can't hear him at the moment. Not sure what's going on. Amen. Well, we've been, of course, talking about this casting our bread upon the water. We have established that uh, when you talk about this, it relates to not it relates to your money, but it also relates to your time, and your talent. It relates to you being able to give. You're looking for opportunities to give of yourself, looking for opportunities yeah. uh, to be a blessing. Uh, because when you do, you don't know, but it won't be much longer, and it will come back to you. And then we started dealing with this, give a portion to seven, also to eight, because we don't know what evil going to come upon the earth. We don't know when we're going to have that need. We don't know when we're going to be lacking. We don't know what we're going to be looking for. But we know if we put out that God will make sure it comes back to us. And I'm a firm believer, and I'm going to end with this so that we can go further. But I'm a firm believer that what we make happen for others, God will make happen for us. So as you have an opportunity, let me, re- let me remind you of the scripture in Galatians, the sixth chapter, somewhere about the uh, 13th verse. T- uh, about, it says, uh, as you therefore have opportunity, let us do good to one another, especially to those who of the household of faith. There's, co- there's a time when we need to learn how to visit the sick, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to see about the incarcerated. Because, and when we do this, it is, us, it is the same as taking care of the Lord himself. So he doesn't want us to hoard. He doesn't want us to hold back, but he wants us to be a blessing. For the scripture says it is more blessed to give than to receive. I'm going to leave it at that so we can go a little further. Amen. Let me check. Uh, Apostle Smith, are you back? Yes. I dropped my phone and it went to mute. That's quite all right. Come on and pick up where Apostle Whitlow left off, and then we'll move Apostle, forward. Apostle Whitlow, thank you. You did, you did better than I'm getting ready to do. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Listen, this this. This scripture has so much on the bone until we've been picking at it for about three weeks and we have not gotten further than two verses. But I, I challenge you again tonight. There's some kind of distortion in the lines over here. 
All right. Uh, Sister Kimmy Kim, if you could find the line that's distorted and mute it for us, please, I'd greatly appreciate it. Go ahead, sir. That is a mystery in the first verse. And mm-hmm. that's your brain. And I talked about last week how that is a miracle statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in the physical, if we put bread on water, it's supposed to get soggy and sink. Mm -hmm. But he said if you cast it, it's going to float, come back, multiply. Or as as Jesse Duplantis likes to say, if you cast your bread up under water, it'll come back, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But then also, Apostle Whitlaw and myself threw this out there. Back in the days, the 60s and 70s, they also called bread money back in the day. Uh-huh. Lay some bread on me. Lay some bread on me, brother. Mm-hmm. And I want you to know. And this is for all the entrepreneurs and uh, business-minded people. Don't be afraid to put your money out there and get the business going. God has promised Mm -hmm. in this scripture, if you will allow me by faith to be your business partner, when you put that money out there, I'm going to make it come back to you multiplied. Amen. Amen. I'm going to bless the business if you just put your trust in me by casting it upon the water. You have nothing to worry about because who made the water? God himself. So Mm -hmm. you know how to guide the water to work for you. Then it says, amen, prepare for seven. Amen. Because something is coming. So it says not only cast your bread or your money. It said, when I bless you, learn how to handle it right. Store it up. Yes. Make it work mm-hmm. for you because a time is coming where you're going to have to be a blessing to somebody else. That is my, my little piece of dissertation mm-hmm. tonight. All right. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Okay, ladies. Uh, I'm going to look at you first. We're going to try to move toward verse 3. So basically what they've just shared with you, not to go back over what's already been said because it's already been covered. I mean, we're being told to be diligent. We're being told to be active. We're being told to make thoughtful decisions in the process of being obedient and walking in faith. For it says after many days it will come back to us. It tells us to turn around and to divide that which we have. Here's where we kind of, and if I remember correctly, maybe any one of you gentlemen can help me out here. I think we kind of got stuck in the mud, so to speak, and it was it was good mud to get stuck in. When we got to the point of divide, talking about dividing what we had, we started talking about giving, and I even said it in my Bible study yesterday There are a lot of you who God has tremendously blessed and has allowed you to have the health to get wealth. You still have a job. You still go to work. But there are many of you who just flat out decide you ain't tithing. Now, this isn't everybody. This is some people. You decide you don't want to tithe anymore just because you're not going into the physical building. Well, I mean, I'm just going to simply say you made a promise to God, so I'm not going to bother that. That's between you and him. You can hold it if you want, but don't feel bad when all of a sudden you develop holes in your pocket. Don't get mad at me if all of a sudden you can't make ends meet, you can't rub two nickels together to get warm. That's your fault, your problem. You settle it. Go back and see what the scripture says. God got up on the children of Israel back in the book of Malachi, and I'm going to kind of bring it in a little bit because I want to get to 
uh, verse 3 here, and I want to give the ladies an opportunity to attack verse 3 before the fellas jump in, because I know the fellas are using buzz saws these days, and I want them to, you know, well, never mind what I want. The bottom line is simply this. We have to get ourselves in a position. So, ladies, let me ask the question. Here it is. I'm going to read this in the Amplified so you can hear this. And any one of you, whether it's you, uh, Vandals Henderson, whether it's you, Sister Glenda, whether it's you, Sister Kimmy Kim, whether it's you, Sister Nina, any one of y'all can jump on this. So one of y'all prepare yourselves. It says, if the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it lies. What does that mean to you, ladies? To hear that scripture, what does that mean? For you me, when I hear that, so it much. says, "No, um, you gotta give us a chance." You know, that's a lot of meat. For <laughs> me, my spiritual eye sees: without rain, you can't grow. So you have to go through the rain to get to the growth. And basically, um, you know, I really believe that we all have um, things in our lives that cause this rain. And after the rain, there comes, like, the growth from that rain, like pain, you know, like trials and tribulations. Going through like this right now, we're in the rainy season of racism, you know. And so in my spiritual eye, it's, it's telling me that no matter what is going on, you can always learn from this situation, and it will, you know, continue on giving us the opportunity to grow in grace. And that is what I get from this wonderful scripture. Okay. Uh, any other? Either of you? Any other? Who's next? Who wants to go at it next? What I got from it was, I don't know that through while you're going through the rain, you're gonna take a lot of twists and turns through the forest. But regardless of which direction you go, it's got to be the right direction. You know, it's got to be in the direction that God is leading you in. And I said, we're all in the forest right now. We got to trust him to get us out of it. Okay. All right. Uh, Vangelis Henderson or Sister Glenda, either one of you want to take a quick shot at it? No, I think I think we covered it. Oh. <laughs> all right. Vangelis Henderson, you want to, before I I, I I I turn to the brothers. I think I'm going to come in after the brothers. <laughs> All right, then. Either one of you brothers want to tackle this first, or should I jump the, Should I jump in Should I jump in the water first? I, I just want to give – I just want to – I just want to look at the the first couple of clauses of verse number three. If yeah. They, if, if, if the clouds be full of rain, uh-huh. they empty themselves. So, so that means to me that you have clouds that have the potential and clouds that don't have the potential. Uh-huh. Some cloud. See, we can tell when a storm is coming by the cloud. Yep. yep. So we know that there's a time when the clouds look like it want to do something. But it has mm-hmm. nothing to offer. It just hides right. the sun, so to speak. But then uh-huh. there's another time when the cloud is so heavy, you can smell it. So if yeah. the cloud be full of rain, suppose, I, I love the word if because if presents a supposition. Suppose the clouds be full of rain. They go into themselves upon the earth. It'd be hard for me. I'd like to say it this way. If you have to use the bathroom, what an analogy. Help me, Jesus. If you have to use the bathroom, I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're doing. If you have to use the bathroom, you are going to find the nearest commode you can find to empty yourself. Did he say commode? Because if if it stays too long, it's going to be a very discomforting feeling. So I cannot imagine rain holding itself uh-huh. back. I, I, okay. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to leave it right there. Cause, you know, I'm, I'm the father of this. Uh, he always, he's such a troublemaker, ain't he? Go ahead. Oh, Apostle Smith. 
He is such a troublemaker. Oh, you, would, <laughs> you would ask you would ask me to speak after the bathroom ministry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look in that same area because my mind uh, went crying out to God for now. Mm. We're crying out for revival. Yeah. Mm. We're crying out for a great move. Mm. Mm. And, and even after the pandemic, Corona, COVID, the COVID-19, all that, there are going to be some folks that's going to be full of the rain. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be others just full of themselves. Oh, God. Oh. Mm-hmm. No anointing, nope. no power, no, mm. no, no word, no revelation, just a crowd, just, just a person in the church. Like they did uh-huh. before. After all that done happened, mm-hmm. but thank God there is another us. Uh-huh. That while we're praying, we're saying, Lord, give it to us. Fill me, mm-hmm. Lord. Give it to me, Lord. And, and then it went on to say, if a tree is cut down, it don't make no difference where it lay to the north or the south. It's a cut That's down right. tree. And if it falls, right. it's just going to lay. That means mm-hmm. there's a whole lot of folks that were standing. And it don't make no difference which way they go. That's all they're going to be is laying down dead in the presence of God. Mm-hmm. Hey. I ain't right, never man. seen a cut. I ain't never seen a cut tree live. Mm. Not yet, anyway. Not a cut tree, anyway. Vanzus Henderson, you want to uh, you want to go at it, or you want to hold off still? Well, um, you don't have to stay. Up. Go ahead. I was just thinking of giving and, and investing in life, and I was thinking as. When you think about giving, and when I was thinking about just giving in general, I was thinking of giving as being an a act of obedience and an act of faith. Um, uh-huh. And I, and I was thinking of giving as being an act of worship. And when you look at those three things, and, and when those, and, and actually, and actually uh, act, um, giving as a, a law uh, that returns and and so I was just thinking that when the Bible says whatever's not a uh, whatever's not a faith is is sin, and when you don't have faith in what you're investing in, then usually you don't invest in something you don't believe in. So if you don't believe Amen. in giving, if you don't believe in investing, then you won't invest. Uh, if the farmer doesn't believe that he's going to get a harvest, then most likely he will not plant seed. And so now it becomes an act of unbelief, and we know that all unbelief is sin. And so what it does is it hinders the increase from getting to you so the seed is intended to bring forth a harvest. But if you don't believe and if you don't, if you don't believe, therefore you won't do the work to invest in the seed bringing forth a growth or increase. And so many times we don't invest in things. You know, I was always told that if you want a ministry, you have to invest in it. If you want whatever you want in your life, you have to be willing to invest in it. Whether you see it or understand it, it becomes now an act of faith. And then the act of obedience is give. It's going to be giving back to you, Christ out shaking the kingdom running over. But if you don't believe that and if you don't act upon what you believe, then now it still becomes an act of sin. And then the seed is not able to give a return. And so whether you see the clouds or whether you see the rain, now what is now in operation is unbelief and is now stifling and even stopping the flow or the increase that was intended to come from the seed. Mm. Um, Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah, what she said. Anyway. Yeah, right? <laughs> right. 
But it, no, and I appreciate what, what what you put out there. Now let, let let's just continue our discussion on this uh, third verse because I mean I like what you said, Apostle Whitlow, about having to go to the bathroom. See, you were being very nice about it, but I'm going to just be blunt and to the point. You hold it long enough, you're going to end up with a leaky situation, and if you ain't got on the pen, you're going to need another pair of pants or a dress or a skirt, panties, underwear, something. The bottom line is this. There is a release. We have to get to the point in place where we're not afraid to release what God has placed in our hands, stepping on on faith and believing that God is going to supply our need according to his riches and glory, and God is going to cause it to multiply. There's something about multiplication. I look at the scripture where Jesus, uh, the, 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 the little boy with the two fish and the five loaves, the little boy had nothing but his lunch. And I like the scripture where it says Jesus took that bread, blessed it, and then he broke it and then distributed it. You see, it's something when you put it in the hands of God and allow him to bless it and then break it and cause a distribution of it. When the tree falls to the north, south, wherever the tree falls, the bottom line is simply this. Stop worrying about what it's going to do. If you believe that God called you, appointed you, and anointed you to do what it is he's called, appointed, or anointed you to do, just go do it. Stop worrying about the outcome. Stop worrying. Imagine if Sister Kimmy Kim sat there and wondered, hmm, I wonder, should I start a radio station? I wonder, should I start a magazine? I'm not sure what's going to happen. Am I going to get those Nina Taylors? Am I going to get those Apostle Whitlow's? And somewhere, uh, Vince, uh, Apostle Smith going to come out of nowhere? Am I going to ever meet an evangelist Henderson? And am I going to hear about a G. Johnson? Uh, you know, I mean, imagine if she took all that stuff into consideration. Where the tree fell is where it lies. She stepped out on faith. And let me throw one more analogy out there, and then somebody can pick up the ball and run with it if you so desire. The main thing is this, and it takes me back to a passage of Scripture when the uh, 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 disciples were, Jesus told them, let's go to the other side. And they decided to stay. He told them to go ahead. He says, I'll catch up with you later, fellas. And they get in the boat, and they start rowing, and all of a sudden this huge, humongous storm comes out of nowhere, and they're fighting for their lives and trying to row, get this ship steered in the right direction and trying to keep it afloat. And then Jesus comes walking on the water. He doesn't walk directly to them. He walks by them. They all freak out, ah, thinking it's a ghost, and Jesus tells them, calm down, fellas. This is nobody but me. I like what Peter said, and this is what I like in this scripture too. Peter said, Lord, if that be you, bid me to come. God is saying to somebody, come. Stop worrying about it. Stop being overly concerned about it. Stop acting like it's going to fail. A lot of times we think it's going to fail before it ever gets a chance to start. But the Lord is saying, come. He wants us to get out of the boat and walk on the waters. If I got to go to the bathroom, Apostle Whitlow, I'm going to find me a bathroom, and I'm going to empty myself in the earth, on the earth, or whatever I got to do. Okay? Mm. Oh, let me stop. Mm. I shouldn't be going back there again. <laughs> I, let, um, if, if, yeah. here, here's the thing. Yeah. Here, here's the thing I want to say real quick, because mm-hmm. you, you talk about this often, and, of course, you know, there's some of the things that, about that particular text that I look at. But mm-hmm. if, if the Lord told Peter to come, Peter had to reach a climatic point. Yes. Somebody's not going to like that right there. But come on. There, had to be, there had to be a place where his faith had peaked. Yep. And so now it needed to go to the next realm. It needed to go. See, what people need to understand is that sometimes we get stuck in a particular area and we don't understand why at one time we want to and then another time we don't. Because when you Mm -hmm. want to, you have reached a climatic peak. And the only thing that is waiting now is the opportunity for the opening to be released. A good God, I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. So, Peter, Lord, I'm in the middle of this thing right here. I'm, I'm in the, and if that's really you, 
Uh, all right, then, then, yeah, you you tell me come. You you tell me come because you tell me come. I know I have my opening. So okay, yeah, yeah. See, everybody not gonna understand that. But Apostle Smith, I think you understand where I'm coming from. When when you reach your climatic a climatic peak. Where the only thing you have left to do is release to go forward to so that you can get what next. Amen. Well, and and and, and uh, listen here, saints. In what uh, Apostle Whitlaw is talking about, unless you get to that place of release, then there's going to be no productivity. And there's no need of casting your bread if you don't if you don't intend for it to produce anything. Then put your bread back in the bag. Amen. And get, and, 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 and get away, amen. Get away from the the faith call. Back up. Don't, matter of fact, don't even pray no more because if you're not interested production process, then you are wasting time. Amen. Because it, it is going to it's going to be a process. But the process is going to cause productivity. All right. And when mm. and when you process through the productivity it will bring you lasting fruit. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, can let I me jump say in? This before we... Yes, you can jump in. Go ahead. Speaking when when uh, when this chapter begins, it says, "Cast your bread," and casting is a verb. And then it says, "Give," and it shall be given. Press that second down and run over. Give is a verb, so that means we have to do something. So it's an act yes. of obedience. So if you mm-hmm. never cast, you never give, then you can never get what's on the other side of your action of giving or casting. So we first have to be obedient. So if the Lord says to give and it shall be given, we have to be obedient to give. And then mm-hmm. we have to believe. So it becomes, an, it becomes an act of obedience and it becomes an act of faith. And then what you were saying in that last uh, statement that you had made, uh, verse 4 kind of goes along with that because then in verse 4 it says, and then who watches the wind will not go, I'm reading in another version, and the one who looks at the clouds will not reach. So if you're worried about what you have done, then you have canceled out your giving. You have canceled out your casting. So when you give, you have to believe that, there's going to be a return on what you have just done because you did it in obedience to what the word has told you to do. And so when you begin to worry about whether or not the clouds are, you know, going to bring forth this rain, if you're worrying about, you know, what's going to happen with the seed, uh, uh-huh. then then it becomes an act of unbelief. And unbelief cancels out your faith because you can't believe and unbelief at the same time. So when we give, we have to trust the word. Because, first of all, giving is in obedience and alignment with the word of God. And when we obey what the word says, then we receive the result of what the word says will come. Bless the Lord. I was kind of hoping you would mm-hmm. read the whole thing. I think you were reading out of the Amplified. It says, and we might as well go ahead to verse 4. We're going to get we're gonna get at least two out the way tonight because we got a few minutes left here. He who watches the wind, waiting for perfect conditions. Too many folk have, God has given us too many great ideas, and we're waiting for the perfect opportunity. You know, there are times when, and I don't know about any of you, but I've come across people who have approached me with some pretty good ideas, and they're waiting for I don't know what. Meanwhile, the ideas that they have, pieces and portions of the ideas that they have, I see in operation in other people that they may have shared their vision with. Sometimes you can procrastinate to the place and point that you lose out and the vision no longer belongs to you, but it belongs to somebody else. 
If God gave you something, God is expecting you to move on it. What are you watching the wind for? Why are you waiting for perfect conditions? The whole thing is, and I'll use myself for an example. I don't mind being transparent. It was said to me earlier today, and Apostle Whitlow, I thank you for being transparent with me earlier this evening when we had a chance to talk. I should have started the ministry, Power to Stand, the church, four or five, maybe even six years ago. And I waited for this and I waited for that. Well, Lord, when I get this, God, if you just show me a sign, all this nonsense. Here's the crazy thing, and a lot of you may not know this, but the ministry power to stand started online before the pandemic reached the proportions to where it is now. Pretty interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. Four or five Years ago, it might have been a different story, but when this church launched, we launched New Year's Eve online, and we had uh, maybe 60, 70 people that came in and shared with us, and, you know, we had a great time, but it's an amazing thing that I waited. I just decided to go ahead and do it. I had no idea what was down the road. The next thing you know, we're in a pandemic, and now we have to use modern technology to do ministry now, but we're coming to a point in place where it was said to me, and I don't, I'll don't. i hold that thought for a minute. I'll tell you about it next Saturday or this Saturday uh, or next uh When's the next time we on? Okay, Sunday, when we go on, uh, do our service, you will hear the report, and I'm going to leave it at that. But, see, it's time to stop worrying about the conditions. It's time for us to stop being overly concerned. We can't wait for the perfect conditions. People will not sow a seed when they feel like the conditions are not right. Now, y'all help me out with this. What is it that people feel like they know more than God? Somebody help me. <laughs> Just a minute, uh, oh, dear. There was something. Yes, there was something you said. <clears throat> there was something you said that I want to home in on. Go ahead. Uh, this 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 idea of why I can't get going. Mm-hmm. Uh, here here's the most famous statement, and all of us have heard this before. I, I would do it, but won't nobody help me? Uh-huh. Well, who's the nobody? Who's the nobody? Thank God you. spoke to you. That's Get right. out there and work it. How do you think? How, how do you think uh, Mrs. Smith got an apple pie in the store now? She cooked them Thank at you. home. How uh-huh. does famous Amos have cookies in the store now? He started at home. That's right. I mean, mm. I can go on and on and on. How do you think Minute Maid got lemonade in the store? Mr. Minute Maid, his children had a lemonade stand from the lemons he had. That's right. Oh, those are some easy ones. No, you know, those are the easy I just, ones. I'm now. just throwing that in. All right. <laughs> but I, but I want to tell you something though. My my point to this is the reason why. You don't have what you have been dreaming and envisioning is because you haven't moved. Uh-huh. God is a, God's not speaking to your neighbor down the street. He hasn't spoken to your church. He spoke to you. So you should be the first partaker. Let me get to try it. And then God will give you other folks that will come along and help you get where you're going. Apostle Smith, I I want to say something. I want to say something on that wise. You said something so profound. Um, I remember some years ago when T.D. Jakes wrote his first book, Woman Thou Art Loose, and he went to the publisher, and he needed some books made. The publisher told him that he needed some an X amount of um, dollars. And T.D. Jakes was sitting there talking about, I don't have this. How am I going to do this? And he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, how do you want people to invest in you and you won't invest in yourself? All how, right. How do, you want, that. How, how do you want God to do something that you're not willing to do yourself? See, we have to understand that faith is not just a fact, but it is an act. 
And so, right. although the scripture does not say, although the scripture does not say, if you take one step, God will take two. It is it evident does. that if you give God something to work with, I will never forget. I will remember about oh, 15 plus years ago, I was living in Savannah, Georgia. And when I came to Savannah, I remember that I was looking for a building. I was having services in my home. I'm not going to go through the whole story, but I was having services in my home. And I just, I just really didn't want people coming in my home. And and so I said, Lord, I need a building. I need, Lord, I need a building. I need a building. The Lord said, okay, go look somewhere. Go look for a building. So I went looking, and I went looking. I went, and I'm like, okay, this is not a, a you know a good neighborhood. I don't think this just wouldn't work, you know. And I saw a sign, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I looked at it, but I went, for, I went elsewhere because it just to me didn't look right. And I kept looking, and I kept looking, and I kept looking. And the Lord said, go back to the same place you was. I went there and I called for I called the landlord, right? Then I went back the third time, but I brought the the, the team with me, the team of saints with me, and we went in there. We looked, and the and the man was. Oh well, this is how much it's gonna be. And one of my one of my deacons said, "Well, you know what? I could do that by myself because it ain't no big deal. You know, the point is we just want to make sure it's workable. And if my pastor likes it, then we want it." So I said, "We're gonna take this building." When we got to the building, and I'm telling, let me tell you something like work. Everything started coming together. People we didn't know started showing. People we didn't know started saying, let me pour it. And then the thing that really got me is it was time to get the carpet in. When we got the carpet to the church, here's the thing. We did not know how to put the carpet down, but the deacon had a friend who was a carpenter, right? He said, I don't do this, but I got a good friend who deals strictly with carpet. He was call- he called him. The man was on his street about to turn into his house, turned right around and came and put the carpet down for me at little to nothing. When you give God something to work with. When you give God something to work with, he will show you something you didn't expect. That's all I was saying. That's all. Praise God. All right, it, 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 that, uh, overseer, I just want to tap in. I just want to tap in with him real quick. In that, okay. in that song by, in that song by Danabel Hall years ago called Ordinary uh-huh. People, she yes. said little becomes much. But when you place it in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right, ladies, you're a little quiet over there. Anybody else? I thank you. I heard Evangelist Henderson. I haven't heard from you, Sister Kimmy Kim. I haven't heard from you, Sister Nina Taylor. I heard a little bit from you, Sister G. Johnson. Come on, ladies, talk to me. Ooh. And then there was crickets. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I just want to say I really believe what was said You know, uh, faith is an action word And um, as we go through The trials and the uh, Ups and downs in life We must continue on being more of a giver Because the more you give The more you're able to take um, Your mind off what you're going through And bless other people So as it rains you know, Allow that um, right to uh, give you the opportunity to be a blessing of others. Like she said it right. It was like amazing that when you give, it, giving is a verb. And our Jesus was a giver. He gave his life so that we can have life more abundant. And with that giving, it costs him a lot, you know. And so okay. as we go through this daily life in, on earth, we must continue on giving love. And love is the yeah. only way. Well, and so as we go through the rain, let's continue loving on each other. Yeah. Let me let me let me do something here, uh, Sister Kimmy Kim, since I got you right there and we thank God for you today. We really do. Take us on a short journey that led you to decide to start elations, period. I mean, just kind of help us. Because I would, I would think that what you did, I am, and, and maybe you can't see what the rest of us see, but this whole conglomerate, Elations Magazine, the radio show, and Elations Honors and all that goes with it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to multiply even larger than it is. But let's go back to the mustard seed stages for a minute. Help us, help us, help the general audience, those listening, understand how you got to where you are. We know it was God, and we know it was faith, but there were you went through some things. I mean, 
you know, there might have been moments where you were feeling like, ah, oh, I give up. I ain't messing with this no more. Come on, help us understand this. Well, I didn't want to do it. Uh, this was actually given to me back in 1994 when I was in Atlanta. I was young, you know, having fun. And God um, brought this idea to me with this brother to start a Christian magazine. I was like, God, I don't want to do this. This is about me. This is my time. I'm away from my parents. I'm about to have fun in Atlanta. So that, that idea came about in 1994. So I did all the things that I wanted to do. I partied, did the first Nick, did the uh, uh, um, Atlanta thing. You know, you had Clark, you have Morris Brown, you have uh, all those party, uh, parties that I was going to. And so God was like, okay, I'm going to let you do what you do. Like, go do you. So to make the long story short, um, back in 2010, after going through my divorce, leaving my um, abuser, uh, I'm a domestic violence survivor, thank God. Rest and I thank God Amen. for allowing me to survive it. And uh, Give yourself so, a hand clap. <laughs> It came back, came back to me, and he said, "Well, are you ready to start the magazine?" I was like, "God, again, not the magazine." So keep in mind, I was broke, two children. I left, and the only thing I took was a baby trail, a couch, and I, uh, we barely had enough furniture in the apartment. I didn't have a dime. I was living off of, of negative bank accounts. I was living on God's divine banking account. I had negative bank accounts the entire time the first two years after I left him because he knew, he felt that I would never leave him because I had two children. I'm still going through school, trying to finish my degree, you know, making, I'm barely making ends meet. I I'm, I'm still don't know how I did, but I continue on tidying. Tidying worked. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> But to make a long story short, so 2009, um, I was researching it again, and then God gave me the um, sign that it was time for me to start it. So I was like, God, if I do this, I need you to have your hand in it. I want you to be the CEO and the COO, and also give me a name that is of you. So I researched all the names, and elation came about. Elation means joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So with yeah. that being said, Elation Mag- oh. Magazine and Elation Radio, that was by mistake, I'm going to be honest. That happens be- because of Jerry Royce. Well, no, 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 no. Elation Radio was on every Monday in a city in St. Louis on a radio station. I was spending too much money for um, 30 minutes a week, and it was really beautiful, but I just thought that the, the pricing was over was over the top. So I met Jerry okay. Royce back in 2014. He told me about I should do it every day. And Elation Radio came, and you were my first uh, podcast. Um, Pastors Coin was first, and then Real Issues, and Fellowship um, Friday with Kimmy Kim, and then Elation Honors was always part of something that I wanted to honor those who serve the community, those who are servant leaders, those who are like great examples for young men, young women. And so it's an honor to give back. And I give that to God. So it's all God's doing. So that's how it came about. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I had no idea yeah. that Pastor's Corner was the first one. I just thought I was among many greats. I didn't think much of it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I, yeah. I want to get into this, uh, some more into this fourth verse. And I want to say verse 5 because we're going to do this one more time because verses 5 and 6 are going to take us where we need to go in bringing this thing to a close. So I want to ask a question to anybody that wants to answer. To the person that, that God has placed a vision in for a business, a legitimate workable uh, money maker, and I don't want to make it sound like a get rich quick scheme. I'm talking about something that's going to benefit the individual and people around that individual. What kind of advice can we offer them? I mean, we could tell them, give them verse four and just call it a day. That would be way too easy to do. But you have people out there who have hopes, dreams, aspirations, and visions, and yet. They need that little extra something to push them over the edge to get them moving forward. Somebody talk to me about this, please. I want to say this real simple, and I'm going to quit. 
I learned a long time ago, the greatest risk you can take is no risk at all. My God. Because if you don't take the risk, you will always wonder what would have happened if. You don't uh-huh. want to live life wondering what would have happened if. That's all I got to say. Anybody else? Well, I I'd like to add. Okay, come on. Come on. Mm-hmm. You, you, you had to talk that thing. I know. Uh, I don't know who it was, but uh, the softer voice come first, and then I think it was Sister Kimmy Kim after that. Okay. This is Angus Henderson. I was just thinking uh, with the Paso uh, Willow had said, uh, and I thought about the saying uh, what came out with Nike, just do it. You know, just do it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I think one of the, the two greatest enemies that the, that the – um, obstacles that I say that the enemy uses is procrastination and fear. Fear of failure, that it's not going to work. Fear of failure, that it's not going to happen the way that your vision, you design your vision to be. Fear of rejection, that if it doesn't work, you know, dealing with the rejection of how people are going to see you. So I believe the enemy uses fear and procrastination. But I want to say to that, just do it. And you do it in faith, trusting the Lord, that as you invest, as you give into the vision, that the Lord will provide. The Bible says that without a vision, the people perish. But as uh, though the vision cherry, wait on it. It's going to take time for the vision to, to produce itself. It's a process, just like a seed. When you plant a seed, it doesn't come up overnight, but you have to wait on it. And so as you wait on the Lord to process the vision, just keep doing Just keep working at it. Keep investing in it. Keep praying and doing all those things. That, that will bring the vision to pass, and the Lord will bring it to pass. The scripture says when you commit your plans unto the Lord, trust him, and he will establish it, and he will bring it to pass. So we, as right. we go through wow. that process, you just let it, let God process you, and you can keep holding on to the faith and keep believing well, and keep good. doing, keep faith and keep doing. Uh, you know, real quickly, if I could, uh, back in 1996, a stranger showed up. I was working at a small radio station here in Ohio, and he uh-huh. said he had been in town for a week, and he was listening. It was a new pastor, someone coming here to open up a church. And he was listening to my show, and he said he was led to come and meet me. And he had told me, this was in 1996, that mm-hmm. my name was going to be known all over the world. And I just looked at him like, who are you? You know, what are you talking about? What, what am I going to get arrested? Or, and, you know, it's going to be on TV. You know, I had, <laughs> I had no idea. And so for, for six years after I had left the last radio station in 2006, I couldn't find uh-huh. a job anywhere. I couldn't find a job mm-hmm. anywhere. And, and somebody said to me, you know, make your own job. You know, do your own thing. And just to make a long story short, you know, that, that vision has come to pass. Uh, now I have a show that's on all over the world. I have a new segment that's on all over the world. And it's just like you yeah. said, it was going to happen, and it did. It took 20 years, but <laughs> here it is. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, you know. You got to, you know, if you have no faith, it's not going to happen. But you got to see it and make it happen. Mm. All right. All right. Well, you know, and I ask those questions because there are people out there looking for us right now. That I know you want to say, give me 30 seconds. There are people out there right now that want to get started in the businesses that have been in their heart since God knows when. The thing they have to understand is basically stop waiting for a perfect condition. Just work with what you got. I like there's something else I'm going to throw out there, and somebody can jump on this immediately after I finish. Uh if you recall, uh, there was a point in time when Moses was standing before God and sort of kind of whining a little bit on the on behalf of the people. And they were talking about they ain't got no meat, they ain't got no water, and the people were freaking out. And God asked Moses a simple question. Moses, what's that in your hand? God <laughs> is saying to somebody today, what is that in your hand? What is it? What do you have? 
that's useful to you. And we look around. We don't pay attention to the fact that we have ordinary, everyday stuff that can make us, and I don't want us to get wrapped tied and tangled in the money game, but I mean, there, there, God has multiple streams of income that we can do simple things and get paid for doing and be joyful about doing. That's the whole thing right there. Funny that you said that, uh, Nina. I, I share a quick story with you, and um, uh, Apostle Smith can attest to it. Uh, back in 19, and well, he doesn't know this far back, but I know where he came in at. Back in 1985, uh, I came to a college radio station. Now, back in the day, uh, they didn't consider college radio to be much. They thought college radio was PlayStation, you know, just people coming together, making a little bit of noise, and there was really nothing to it or nothing about it. Well, uh, I went to, and this is the first, I went to literally uh, uh, my first Stellar Awards, and I heard a couple of uh, commercial station uh, 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 managers say, you know, college radio ain't nothing. That was a bad move on their part. In 1990, when I became program director for this college radio station, I made it my business to make sure that that station became relevant in terms of we by the time I got finished in two thousand four, I we were doing our show, Doctor Bobby Jones just happened to be coming into town, uh and heard the show. I was requested to come and co host with him for the Urban Impact Summit, which was held in Foxwood back in two thousand four, two thousand five. Or two thousand five, two thousand six. The dates are wrong. From that point on, that launched that station to the point that by 2009, we were stellar award ready. We could always make the first ballot, but because we had a large station in New York and a large station in Boston, we were always sort of kind of knocked out of the first round. But the point I'm trying to make is God made us relevant. We had a situation, and I'm going to go move on because we're running out of time. We had a situation where uh, one of my announcers was on, and they were playing the song by Donnie McClurk, and we fall down. This individual called into the station, and this wasn't the only time. We've had other times when people have called in. Called into the station because they were about to commit suicide. And mm. that individual ministered to them the whole time that song was playing, and next thing you know, we get a call the next week, and they were thanking us because of what had happened. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't know. She, the, the young lady that got that call, I think, is listening to us right now. I'm not going to call her name, but she knows who she is. And to this day, you know, I mean, I've just made up in my mind, and I had this one thing about the radio station. I would always say this, and I still say it to this day. And it's a song from uh, the great Quincy Jones back in 1976. The name of the song was entitled What Good is a Song? The lyrics are simple, and this is a standard that we developed at this station. I told them, what good is a song if it can't inspire, if it has no message to bring? If the song can't take mm -hmm. you higher, then it's not good yeah. enough to sing. And if it ain't good mm -hmm. enough to sing, then it ain't good enough to play. And we lived by that standard the entire time I was there. And I think they're still doing it to this day. I don't know. I haven't. I, I, I need to check in on them. I just don't. But, you know. They canceled it go out. Go ahead, sir. They did. They canceled it out. Yep. Wow. All, all wow. your buddies are over with YBC now. Okay, well. To God be the glory for the time that we had. That's all I'm going to say on that. All right, let's do some wrap-up here because it's uh, the, we're at the bottom of the hour, uh, and I'm not going to call for an order. As you, feel, as you feel in your spirit, what does this, these scriptures say to you? I want all the ladies to go first. I am going to put that one order. All ladies, I want to hear what are you thinking tonight? What do you take out of tonight? Each one, no matter who go first. What I take is I? dream bigger. Go ahead. Just Come back on faith, no matter what. Uh huh. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? I second faith. 
I'm with my sister, Nina Taylor. Faith is the only way. Faith and love. Yep. All right. Now I have two more. I'm listening for you. <laughs> Come on, T. Johnson. Uh, Come back. Speak up a little louder about- because I can barely I was thinking about right. writing the vision, write the vision, yep. and make it plain. Uh-huh. And, I, and I was thinking uh, to remember that we all have a purpose, a God-given purpose. And I would just say, begin to write down the things that you're good at and the things that you, the skills that you have, and begin to to line it with something and find out what you're good at. Because whatever we like doing and and, and we have a skill for it, most likely it leads us to the purpose that God has for us to do. So if you love writing, if you love people, if you like uh, helping people, there's something down on the inside of you that's leading you to the deep thing that God created you for. And then um, I, I, was, I was thinking about the book that they wrote, and he said, can you stand to be blessed? So when you are writing the vision, just know it's going to be a process. You know that there's going to be times when you feel like maybe giving up, Maybe when you don't feel like investing the time, but just keep at it because you have a purpose and you have a destiny. And God's looking for you to take your rightful place in the earth realm. Amen. G. Johnson. Um, I just wanted to say I'm still I'm still working on my vision. I have attempted it my vision twice, um, and I'm still working on it. So it's very sentimental to me, but. Yeah, I'm still working on it. Yeah. At least you didn't give up. That's what counts. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. Either 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 of the two apostles, uh final comment. And here's what I want to do with each apostle. On your comment, give us your clothes the way you would close your show. Y'all are gonna get three different closings tonight. So just hang in there. So whoever starts first, give us your clothes because we're we're gonna take this thing out of here. Come on. <laughs> and <once again. laughs> Go ahead, Come on. <laughs> well, all I'm going to say, <laughs> Lord Jesus, why you do this? Here's what I'm saying: that remember, time's gonna come. You're gonna have to use the restroom. You don't want to <laughs> hold what's in there because it probably <laughs> wouldn't be beneficial. It might make you feel some kind of way. And it might smell another way to others. In the meantime, just remember this, that your marriage is meaningless until your mate is meaningful. Now go with God, and he will, and he will. Go with you. (laughs) Go ahead, uh, uh, Apostle Smith. Now, how do I connect? With the bathroom evangelist, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> listen at this. Listen at this. <laughs> Along with your vision and your dream and the analogy given to us concerning the bathroom, <laughs> I want to close tonight by telling you Wipe well and wash your hands. Oh, Lord. Now, listen at me. Let everything behind you be wiped out. But take your hands and go forward. I've never seen a person have to go wash their hands that goes backwards. All I'm saying to you tonight, forget those things which are behind. I'm so Uh glad Kim, I'm so glad Kim was not held by the abuse. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that others were not held by this and that. Look at Oprah Winfrey now. Yep. A woman raped several times. Mm -hmm. Y'all probably Mm -hmm. read her story, Mm -hmm. but look at her now. So all I'm saying to you, it sounds crazy as a boss of Whitlow, but wipe and wash. Leave the past behind you and take them hands and wash and go towards your future. And I say, if you're catching hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. God got greater things in store for you. Amen. You've been listening to the Pastor's Corner. I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard 
Creek, your host, along with Apostle Irvin Whitlow, Apostle Vincent Smith, with our special guest tonight, uh, Evangelist uh, Henderson, uh, Sister G. Johnson, Miss Nina Taylor, and Dr. Kim Robinson, our producer. We pray that something was said tonight to bless you. You're waiting for me to give my final dissertation? I don't need to because each one of them has said something that I probably would have said. All I will say is simply this. Get out of the boat. Your comfort zone is not the place to be if you're a dreamer. The pit is not the place for dreamers. All right, I'm going to stop right there. So here we go. Kimmy Kim, get the music ready. In the course of your work week, you can keep the pedal to the metal, the pep in your step. Keep that glide in your stride. Just enjoy life. So I keep the smoke in your stroke. Don't you dare let life cause you to choke. Yesterday's history. Forget about it. Tomorrow's a mystery. Stop worrying about it. Live today as if it were your last. Remind the devil he's defeated. Jesus Christ, he is Lord. God is still in control. You have an anointing. You have a purpose and a destiny. And God, through the Holy Spirit, is here to lead, guide you to every ounce of it. If you told desire to get there. Until next Thursday for the Pastor's Corner, but this coming Saturday for Making Marriage Meaningful, I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard Jr., and everybody say goodnight, folks, with me together on the count of three. One, two, three. Good night. Good night. Shalom. Open it more. I got it. 